finally here. Cast and transitions are finally here and they are insane. I cannot believe it. Anyway, guys, in this video, we're going to be going over custom transitions, what you can do with them, and also how you can make your own custom transitions. Let's go. Finally, 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 we have transition proper transitions in DaVinci Resolve 17. As you could see from that little video, these are some of the custom transitions that I've so far created. And they look sensational. Extremely powerful. <laughs> It's absolutely extremely powerful. I'm going to show you how I created some of these transitions. And the reason why some of these are so powerful is because they're custom transitions, which means you can change this to whatever you want. So say, for example, this logo, I can actually open this up in the Fusion page. You can do that a few ways within DaVinci Resolve 17. You can either click onto the transition and on the right hand side here, it has this icon here, which is open in Fusion, or you can right click on the transition itself and it should say open in Fusion page. Give it a couple seconds and then once you do that, you should see, well, this is my custom transition. So all really you need to do is swap in a logo. I've got this Adidas logo. I'm just going to plug that in. Bang. I can go back to DaVinci Resolve and we have that straight away. Isn't that insane? I don't know about you, but I think that is absolutely insane. Right, so let me copy and paste this transition and you can see. Bang. Bang. Okay, let's rewind because we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Let's go right back to the beginning. Okay, so with DaVinci Resolve 17, they've actually introduced a whole bunch of new transitions within a system. So to access them, you go to effects and then video transitions. You have everything from dissolves to irises to different wipes and motions, but there's also fusion transitions. So these are transitions which DaVinci Resolve Blackmagic Design themselves has actually created. And what's powerful about these is you can actually customize and open up every single transition. So say for example, we have a zoom in transition here. Classic Sam Calder zoom in transition. If we click onto the transition, you can see on the right hand side here on the inspector, it actually shows you a transition tab. So this tab here is actually also new within the inspector tab. You have a dedicated transition tab. So if we can click onto that, you can see we have several parameters here. We have the length of the transition in seconds and all frames, depending on which you prefer. So if I wanted to make the transitions five seconds long, I can. I'm going to undo that. You can also see the alignment. So if you want it to be at the beginning of the clip or the end of the clip, this is so, so powerful because you might not necessarily be accurate when you're dragging in. Perfect. You also see you have some parameters that you can customize, but the most important thing and the reason why I'm so, so excited for this whole project is you can open it in Fusion. So again, how do you open in Fusion? I'm about to show you. You can do it two ways. One, by clicking onto this or going down to the bottom here and right clicking open in Fusion page. Now give it a couple of seconds. It will automatically open in Fusion page. You can see right here, this is our transition. This is the transition which Blackmagic Design themselves have created. And the reason why this is powerful because you can customize in any which way you want, which is, I don't know, Adobe's not doing that. Apple Final Cut, they're not doing that. It's time to switch for Premiere Pro, guys. I'm telling you, the visual resolve is the way. But anyway, I'm getting, I digress. So most of the transitions are packaged like this. They're normally in a group. So typically I tend to ungroup them. Bang. So now we can see more in detail what's actually going on here. Okay, so we have the foreground, background, we have the actual transition and we have the media out right so this right here is actually the zoom transition and we can use this to customize the transition if we wanted to to say for example i wanted to add like a glitch effect or chromatic aberration you have all of the tools within open effects and also fusion to so say for example i could go to the effects library or type something in or me personally because i know some of the effects that i want i can just press control space bar and i'm going to type in prison blur bang and now i've automatically added a prison blur after the transition so all I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the strength, increase aberration distance, just so I can show you and increase the aberration strength. And now if I play it back, you can see that we have a glitchy chromatic aberration type of transition. And when I'm going back into the edit page, it's updated in real time. So if I go back a little bit and I play it back, you can see we have the effects. And it's literally, <laughs> it's, it's, it's done. It's customized like, and this is one of their transitions that they've made and I've now customized. You see how this is very, very powerful. I'm telling you, Adobe's not doing that. Adobe's not doing that, guys. So they make you pay ridiculous money. So after you do that, how can you save it? Well, there's two ways you can do it. You can have a right click onto here and click create transition preset and then we can time it, title it like, I don't know, glitchy zoom. And then if you scroll up, there'll be like a user transitions. But 
the way I like to do it is I like to have all of my transitions in my fusion transitions tab. So you can see here, I've got my film burn. I've got my left to right transition, which looks amazing. I've got my logo transitions here that I've created. Old VHS burn, right to left, vintage film burn, warp glitch. So how do you save it there? I'll show you. So you right click, you go back into fusion, basically open the fusion page. You then basically regroup all of your transitions. So I'm just going to regroup all of these elements. I'm going to select all of them, click control G. Then I'm going to highlight everything, right click, click settings, save as. Then what you need to do is find where it says fusion. Then go to templates, edit, transitions, and save it in there and you're done. Then whenever you restart resolve, you have the new custom transition that you've created. Now, if you want to create one from scratch, let me show you exactly how you can do it. And this is insane, absolutely insane. So basically what you could do is drag in any type of transition that you want. So say for example, this cross iris. In fact, let's do it here. We're going to drag this cross iris in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the transition. And then we're going to click on to convert to fusion cross dissolve. And this is going to change whatever the transition is to a cross dissolve by default. So it doesn't matter whether you drag an arrow iris, a diamond iris, a barn door. When you right click and you change it, it will automatically change to a fusion cross dissolve. And once we have that, we can right click on the transition again and go to open the fusion page. So now we have our own base of a transition that we can create and customize ourselves. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto this transition and I'm going to ungroup it so I can see what's going on. And as you can see, we have our dissolve here and this is the base of our transition. So what can we do with this? We can do a few things with this. By default on the right hand side, if you open the inspector, you can see the different operations that this custom transition that you're about to create has. You have the normal dissolve, you have additive dissolve, you've got erode, which is kind of like a luma fade, which is it's kind of cool to be honest. You can literally just change it to that and then save the transition. You've got random dissolve, random noise dissolve, alpha merge, gradient wipe. As you can see, it's not doing anything. I'll show you why in a second. And also, S M P T E wipe. Now this is interesting because you can go from left to right. You can also go from top to bottom, but you could also add a border. If you wanted to, you can reduce the border width, increase the softness. And you have this, which is not a bad transition, but this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about how to create our own custom transition. So remember before we went to gradient wipe and nothing happens. Well, that's because we're going to use a video or use something in order to create our own transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of the effects that I've got, which is a quick smoke effect, right? So I'm going to load into viewer one. So by dragging this onto viewer one here, you can see the effect. If I press space bar, we can see this is the effect that I want. So I want to be able to use this as a base to create a transition. Now, ideally, it's actually much more preferable to have a black and white video like this. So you can use this as the alpha, but we're going to use this. So what can we do here? The quickest way to create the transition is once you have your video, plug this into the dissolve right here. And as you can see, straight away, since we've changed it to gradient wipe, we have some form of transition straight away. If I go back to the edit tab, it's updated in real time. I can play it back. Bang, we have some sort of transition, but it doesn't necessarily look great. We're about to fix that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to reopen fusion tab. Let's see what we can do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control space bar. I'm going to type in CC for color corrector and I'm just going to desaturate this. So this is truly black and white now. Great. Now I'm also going to adjust the contrast gain, lift and gamma because I essentially want this to be pretty much just black and white, right? And that looks pretty good to me. Now I want to customize this further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a blur. Directional blur. Load this into the viewer. If I increase the blur strength, you can see the effect that it's having on the transition. I can change the angle a little bit to make it slightly sharper. If I press play, we have this. Not bad, not bad, not bad. But as you can see, it kind of starts off weird. If I go to edit and let's play the transition back. Yeah, it kind of jumps. It's not really smooth. So we can do a few things with this. Right click, open the fusion page. I'm going to add a transform node, put this in the viewer, and I'm just going to increase the size a bit, ever so slightly. Let's go back, see what that looks like. Yeah, that's not bad. That is actually 
not bad. But we can take this further. This is the base of our transition here. And if we wanted to, we can add more stuff. So say, for example, again, after the dissolve, I could add a prism blur. To get that kind of traumatic aberration effect, I'm going to reduce the strength, increase the distance, increase the strength ever so slightly, play it back. We have this, which looks kind of crazy and kind of ugly, but we're going to go with it. There's also one thing I haven't touched on, which is splines and keyframes. Not only can you add whatever effects that you want, if we wanted to add like scan lines, for example, we can add scan lines. You can literally, <laughs> you can go as crazy as you wanted to, and you can also animate these things. You can literally animate it. So say, for example, I wanted to animate the line shift, right? I can go to zero, put a keyframe here, go to the end of the transition. Increase the size a little bit. If I play it back, you have a kind of animated line shift, which is insane. Not only this, but if we go to keyframes, we can see literally, we can actually see where our keyframes are. So if, for example, we wanted it to be slightly faster or slower, I can literally just move the keyframes about. Or if I wanted to change the transitional curve, again, I can go to scan lines, zoom in. I can highlight both of my points, press S for smooth. And you can see we now have a smooth curve here. So this is extremely powerful. You can do an exponential amount of things, ridiculous. In fact, if I wanted to add a two, three, five aspect ratio after the fact, I could do that. We can type in letterbox, bang, and open up my inspector. Reduce the width. And now this will force a 235 by 1 aspect ratio into the transition as well. And not only this, but we could animate that so it animates on and off. The possibilities are truly endless. And this is why I'm so, so excited. Because literally, just like that, we have a transition that we've created in quite literally just a few minutes. Bang. And we're done. And you can do this with a whole bunch of things, not necessarily just this. I don't even need to save this up. So again, these are some of the transitions that I've managed to create myself just by playing with the parameters that I've shown you and adding some of the effects. You can see they are very, very, mm, they look exceptional. They actually look truly exceptional. And what's crazy about this is anytime you want, you can open up and change it. Say, for example, here with my custom transition, my right to left, I can open this any time that I want. Literally, I can open an infusion page. And here you can see I have, oh, I can't show you the secret source. I can't show you the secret source. But my point is, I can open this up anytime that I want and customize it. If you wanted to add a node in before or afterwards, I can. I can add like an analog damage. I can put that in there. Now we have this effect. I can add some vignette in if I wanted to. Shutter weave. I can go out to edit and you can see we've now further customized our own custom transition. We literally have endless possibilities. Hold on though, we are not finished. No, we are not finished. There's actually more. <laughs> it's actually unbelievable. There's, there's actually more that you can do with this. So on the left-hand side here, if you open up the effects library, you see it says generators. If we grab a solid color and we drag this slightly over our timeline and we make it the length of a transition that we want. So say, for example, I think this is a decent amount of time, right? Cool. Now what I could actually do is I can go back to my video transitions any literally any video transition and we can drag it over the top so say for example i have my left to right if i drag this on top of my generator and i extend the transition to cover it what i need to do is select onto my generator change the color and now i've literally got a colored transition literally as simple as that and you can duplicate this if you wanted to so it fades in and out of the same transition and we have a colored transition. And if I want to change the color, just click onto it, go to video, change the color. I can make it red, I can make it white if I wanted to. It's literally that simple. Not only this, but you can actually mix and match. So say, for example, I don't know why I'd want to, but if I wanted to have like a spiral wipe after that transition. In fact, let me do something which makes more sense. Let me just do a, so it starts off with this. And then it ends up with a cross dissolve. Literally. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. In fact, we can take this one step further. You can actually create your own transitions. So say, for example, push transition here. If I drag it over the solid color, I extend it a little bit. Then I duplicate it, drag it. We now actually have a new, literally a new transition. We can actually create a border. the transition and i can add a color say i want to add red 
I can increase the border. Let me give it size of 100. I can go to the other one again, put a border on 100. Change the color, make it a red. And just like that, we have a new transition. It doesn't look the best. Why? Well, we can introduce some motion blur. It looks way better. Introduce motion blur in the other one as well. What else can we do? We can ease in and out. So if we wanted it to be way smoother, we can. We can also duplicate this, change the length. So we can make this slightly faster. Hold Alt to copy the transition. Then we could actually, we can actually change the color of the generator this time. And you can see that we have an even new transition. And not only this, but say for example, we didn't want to use a push. We literally have all of the different transitions here. So we can change it to a clock wipe, for example. And we can change this here. And <laughs> I mean, that looks kind of bad, but you get the point. And this is all within the edit page. So if you're feeling kind of lazy and you didn't want to go into the fusion page, I don't know why you went because you can create some crazy things like this. I mean, this is kind of cool. If you didn't want to go into the fusion page, you can literally create your own custom transitions within the timeline. And this is insane. Like the ability to find something you like, personalize it, make it yours, or create something completely from scratch. It's actually mind blowing. It's extremely powerful. I just can't believe it. And the one last thing I'll leave you with is this. You can actually merge multiple transitions together. So say, for example, this custom transition that I created. If I wanted another transition that maybe DaVinci Resolve has, I can literally just merge after. So I can go to effects library, edit templates. I can scroll down. I can find the transitions here. So I could do a film strip. I can click onto that. And just like that, we've merged two transitions. So I have my custom transition with DaVinci Resolve's film strip. And we have, I'm saving that. Oh, I'm actually going to save that. That looks, that looks pretty good. Let me go back to the other page. Yep. Oh, I see for laggy, but we have a brand new transition. This is powerful. We literally have a brand new transition. The possibilities are endless. You can just keep going and going and going. And going. I literally spent the whole day yesterday playing with custom transitions creating transitions figuring out what you can do with them what you can't do with them it's literally the possibilities are endless anyway guys if you like this video please share subscribe comment like i know it was a little bit all over the place a little bit disorganized but i'm so excited about this to be resolve 17 is extremely powerful and i cannot believe it but yeah guys i'll see you on the next video the next tutorial 